Good day, fellow investors. One of the stocks I received probably about 10 to 15 emails over the last six months that it is cheap, a value investment, a great investment, is Tor Industries. However, the first email started coming in when the stock price was around 120 and the stock price now is 60. So ouch for those that sent me the emails six months ago or more. And Tor Industries is a cyclical stock and is a perfect example to explain or to show how a lot of value investors get trapped. So that's what we are going to do today and then we're going to see, okay, where is Tor in its market industry cycle now? Where would be the average? Is it still exuberant or below the average uh, cycle valuation? When you find such investments below the average cycle valuation, then it is a buy. So let's see. So the stock price 2016, boom, exuberance, it went from 60 to 150, 160, and then it dropped during 2018 to the current levels of 60. Emails started coming in at 120, so I really am sorry for the guys that invested heavily there in, during that times. But let's see whether there is more risk more potential or it's a really bargain and investment. There is one way how value investors get trapped. We have an extremely cyclical industry that makes the fundamentals look amazing at cycle peak. If you look at TOR's fundamentals earnings, we see revenue growth from 2009, it was 1.5 billion to 2018, 8.3 billion. Huge growth, four times growth over what, 10 years. Earnings per share went from 30 cents to $8, amazing growth. Dividend went from 30 cents to $1.5. So all the fundamentals looked amazing. And with earnings per share in 2018 of eight and the stock price between 100, 120, everybody was looking at this huge growth and then combining it with a P ratio of 10 to 15, which made it an extreme bargain alongside the dividend. However, then the next two quarters came and we'll see later about the last quarter and revenues dropped, earnings halved after just two quarters. So by the end of the year, this will be at zero to two, perhaps even negative earnings. And then there go your fundamentals. So reality struck. They did make 1.6 billion in operating cash flows over the last 10 years, but they also spent 927 billion on acquisitions, not including the last acquisition. So 1.6 billion operating cash flows, if I take the average, is 160 million, which is $3 per share times 15 valuation. We are at 45 as an average cycle value. We'll see later more about that. Uh, the acquisition and positive every environment allowed for extremely high cash flows at cycle peak because people buy RVs really as luxuries at cycle peak. When there is a recession slowdown, nobody buys them. We'll see later. So as I said, second quarter 2019, sales dropped 33%, which is a terrible, terrible result. Gross profit dropped, what, 50%. Earnings per share went negative. So very, very leveraged, extended, sensitive to drops in sales. And I think the same story happened with Tata Motors, which was another company I received a lot of emails. Many saw a cheap price earnings ratio of seven and high dividend yield when the stock price, in this case in rupees, was about 500. And then it was nothing but down as the stock price is now at around 200 still showing good fundamentals. So the long-term chart of Tata is similar to Tor's. Uh, the only difference is that the exuberance with Tor was, was much shorter. So on the chart, many just look at the drop from 150 to 60 and then say, oh, it's a bargain because it was 150. But please, when you do such things, just look at the longer term chart and you will see that the stock price was around 50 around 60 for a long period between 2013 and 2016, which doesn't make it look like a bargain. Don't forget about the exuberant spike there. And I get probably 10 emails per week about how this stock is cheap because it fell 50%, but nobody watches how it was much lower or it went up 200% prior to that. Another trap, unexperienced 
investors fall into. Now, is Tor a good investment now? So let's see about Tor's cycle, whether it is the stock price is below the average cycle value or still above the average cycle value. Inventories are huge, <laughs> inventory correction, so sales have dropped, dealers found themselves with a lot of inventory, which is not good. And sales have already been dropping for the industry for a year now, and they are expected to drop more and really significantly. We are looking at 2019 compared to the peak of 2017, it's a drop of 20%. And we are still with the economy doing very well, unemployment doing very well, and interest rates, okay, have stabilized, but look, just an increase of 20% of interest rates have really smashed sales. If interest rates go up or we see economic slowdown or consumer confidence declines, then we are really, really in trouble. In 2009, RV sales dropped from almost 400,000 units per year in 2006 to 165,000 per year in 2009 and 237,000, 240, 2010. So those are drops of 50, 60% in revenue, which would really change things to for Tor. Then something that really changes the game for Tor is now at the late cycle, at peak cycle, they made an acquisition to grow in Europe. The environment isn't growing in Europe, but they expect, I don't know what, synergies, growth, etc. As I look from the long-term chart, RVs, the RV industry, in Europe isn't in a positive trend, interest rates declined, but sales haven't passed the 2010 peak. And I'll explain you why. For example, this is where I was born, Novigrad in Croatia, and this was usually a camping site where would people bring their RVs, park them, and all these camping sites are now moving into this prepared homes, which give you more comfort, you don't have to pull, you don't have to think about an RV and everything, and probably for not much of a bigger price. And you can see here, this was all a camping site like we see on the right, and now it's all with these high houses, new houses, mobile houses probably, that are there on the left. So in Europe, I see a very negative trend for RVs, and that's why the Heimer family <laughs> was I think pretty happy to sell their business to Tor that leveraged themselves with what? 3 billion and I don't know where they will see growth which is another very big risk for Tor which changes the party because if you don't have that in a recession you can survive, you can shower with the bucket but if you have now debt, f buying something that's probably you overpaid for then you are in trouble. Then their story, 77 million households camping each year, okay, and then if just a small number of them decides to buy an RV, which is not logical because camping is for not bringing a big home. So this is the message, but when there is a recession, wherein there is a slowdown, this really gets bad. And we can see that when consumer confidence drops, the number of registration really drops by what? almost 50% and you have to imply that into the cycle, into your valuation, into your calculation for the company. Going back to the acquisition, they issued stocks, they took 3 billion in debt, 3 billion in debt, which means to 150 million at least in interest cost per year. If I look on the average cycle, free cash flows, let's take 200, 2015 as the average, even if things might be worse, and forget about the exuberant last two years, then we are 200 million in free cash flows, put it a burden of 150 million, put the difficult situation in Europe, even if we see a recession there. And my average value for the company is 100, 150 million in cash flows for from two to three, four dollars per share in cash flows for dividends, growth, etc over the long-term cycle, which in this case lasted, what, seven, 10 years. So that leads me to a cycle average price of 30 to 50, three to five dollars times 10, 15, so okay, so we are there 60 now, but if I want a margin of safety, then I want the stock price to be below the average cycle, 
So let's say average cycle free earnings, when there is a depression, slowdown times 10, stock price 30, margin of safety below book value, stock price below 20. And you might call me crazy, but the stock price was there in 2012, 2009, 2003. So I would be careful with that exuberance because that's not value investing. And I hope this shows you how a value investment analysis is done on such a stock that looks like a value investment. So always remember exuberant point of the cycle, what's the average and I want to buy when it's well below the average with a margin of safety so that I don't lose money no matter what happens. At 60, I think perhaps it will be at the average. So there is a lot of potential for down if the RV sector, if the debt, if the acquisition don't pan out as planned. Thank you for watching, looking forward to your comments and I'll see you tomorrow in the news.